Today I'm looking at companion shoes to the Saucony Endorphin Pro and the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro. Hey people, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. Today could be the first episode in a long running segment to the channel which has been suggested by Etienne Dupont from Quebec, Canada. ATN asked for some videos documenting some great training partners for some of the new super shoes that everybody's in a tiz about. The two super shoes up today are the Saucony Endorphin Pro and the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro. So just to let you know, I'm not going to go with the most obvious choices here. I think it's very clear that there are some shoes which work really well with these shoes, some good pairings that have already been established. I'm gonna try and look for some alternative ones rather than those typical options. I think going with the standard stuff will just make lacklustre viewing. I bet there'll be some comments saying, why didn't you go with those obvious options? Well, everybody knows about those. So first up is the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro. A shoe which landed without that big bang, but has built up some real steam like a traction engine. And now I think it's one of the most sought after running shoes around. I did see that Adidas are bringing out a high-vis version. That would look really good with my high-vis boil-in-the-bag jacket. I mean, if this one wasn't bright enough already, they've gone for the other super bright colour. The ride's quite unique in this one, so it's been quite tough to actually narrow down some shoes that are similar. Though I have managed to pinpoint a couple of options. Those not willing to wear out their race shoe might opt for the Zoom Fly from Nike. You didn't see that one coming, did you? I think this one could make a really good training partner to the Adi Zero Adios Pro. I find the midsole and outsole setup to be very similar, actually, although parts of the upper are not. I think the toe box is breathable enough, and I did originally switch out the laces in this one to get a slightly better lockdown, just to some laces which were a little thicker, just a better fit overall. In fact, I think this one had a better fit than the Zoom Fly Flyknit and the Zoom Fly 3. I think this one's close to the ride of the Adi Zero Adios Pro. Certainly a bit of a left field option, but I think the underfoot feel is similar. I think it's all about that rocker here at the front of the shoe and the rigidity, the firmness of the midsole material used in the Zoom Fly also. I think it could work as a good training partner. You can pick these up if you search around as well for relatively cheap prices. There's even a few left on Stock X, which people obviously just couldn't shift. I think a lot of people will say, well, get the Adi Zero Pro, but I feel they're quite different shoes. Don't really feel that it makes a really good training partner to the Adi Zero Adi Pro. I'm gonna provide two training shoe options to the Super Shoe. And the second one today for this one is the Takumi Sen. I mean, this is a heavily stripped down shoe, by far a more responsive and lower to the ground feel, but I think it's in the upper that the similarities are more present. The Selamesh material here is very similar in feel to the Adi Zero Adios Pro. Though I would say be cautious in sizing, this is a by far more fitting shoe. I think the DNA of the other shoe is here within the Takumi Sen 6, but with a much, much lower stack height. Quality shoe craft and master design. Probably want to take on some of those shorter distances if you own the Adi Zero Adios Pro and don't want to use it for that. Again, this one can be picked up on some really good deals right now, so do shop around. Just a quick note, if it's your first time here and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. And it really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like. Let's move along to the Endorphin Pro now. Now everybody's gonna say the Endorphin Speed's a really good companion to this shoe. I think they're pretty much identical aside from a few changes in the upper and of course a nylon plate in the Speed as opposed to the carbon plate in the Pro. Aside from that, same shoe. I feel though there's a couple of other shoes out there that are really good training partners to this one. I think my first selection would be the Reebok Run Fast 2. I think the Pebax midsole material here does give a similar feel underfoot to the Pro. Again, there's quite a bit less in the midsole stack here and no carbon plate. But I think this makes a really good daily use shoe for those bread and butter miles. Nice and light too. I think they're almost the same in terms of weight. These can be picked up for a really reasonable price and even less if you wait for one of Reebok's crazy discount deals. And it proved durable enough in the midsole and the outsole. I mean, there's far more here in the upper on the Run Fast 2 than the Endorphin Pro. And a more prominent heel counter is next to nothing in the Pro. A thinner tongue than most shoes shows some similarity between this and the Pro, but at a fraction of the cost. I think I picked these up for about 65 pounds 
And we all know how much the pro is. Big dough. If Earth credits are not in plentiful supply, then this one makes a really good training companion. I think as a companion shoe, it's close enough for you to be able to enjoy that PBAX midsole material in a similar implementation to how it's used in the Saucony Endorphin Pro. It's like tiny little bits mulched up together, like papier-mâché, maybe. I always remember at school making a papier-mâché balloon. Good days. Now, brace yourself, because this one's going to really come out of left field. I was thinking about the Saucony Endorphin Pro, and certain words came into my mind. Speed roll, curved shoe, durable. And what fit all of these things? The A6 Glide Ride. Yeah, I've not seen this one for a while. Really does need a clean. This is a shoe I reviewed way over a year ago. Yeah, it's well built, it's extremely durable, and it's got that incredible curve. Somewhat firmer though, and a lot heavier than the Endorphin Pro. Yeah, it still features that rocker-like design. Got me thinking. I mean, don't expect p back based cushion here. This is a lot firmer than the Endorphin Pro. But the Glide Ride is quite rigid. It doesn't have a carbon plate, but it does have this sort of plastic plate through the midsole of the shoe. And there's some real rigidity there. <sighs> much more padding in the tongue there's a serious tongue on this one and in the back there in the heel it's built to last i think the prominent structure to this shoe will certainly raise some eyebrows that i've selected it as a possible training partner but there's nothing wrong with using a heavier shoe if it's got the same type of feel i truly feel that this shoe will give the wearer a similar underfoot feel to that in the endorphin pro I'd actually argue that the lockdown's a awful lot better in this shoe. I just feel that the transition will be quite similar between the two shoes. You can pick these up for a very reasonable price right now. And with that AHA rubber on the outsole, they're gonna do you till 3020. Well, maybe not that long, but quite a while. I mean, I put 100 miles on these, but there's actually no wear <laughs> whatsoever. I don't know what they make this rubber out of. So there's some of my strange shoe companion selections. What do you make of that, guys? It's really easy to say, Saucony Endorphin Speed, Adi Zero Pro. But I think it's far more interesting to dig a little deeper into the archive and see what works. If you've got any good suggestions for companion training shoes to the Adi Zero Adios Pro or the Saucony Endorphin Pro, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget Cats, Christmas is on the way and the new Ed Bird channel merchandise is now available via Teespring. It should be just down below. Is that Father Christmas I hear? Musical interlude time. I delved far into the archive to dig this one out today. The My Iron Lung EP by Radiohead. Radiohead used to put out some fantastic EPs with extra tracks, B-sides and things. And the My Iron Lung EP was no exception. Track two is fantastic, The Trickster. There's super guitar work on that one. Interesting rhythms, just the feel, unlike any other band really. Track four, the punch drunk lovesick sing-along is just bizarre. But I love those strange interludes they always put on their EPs and their albums. I do love the acoustic version of Creep at the very end of this album, but I think it's the very short track you never wash up after yourself that's one of my favourites. Can't believe this one was released way back in 1994. Really doesn't seem that long ago, but it is. So if you haven't checked out some of those B-sides and stuff from Radiohead, it really is worth it. The B-sides from OK Computer are superb too. Okay, that's just about all for today for this new series. I want to say thanks to Atian for getting hold of me and coming up with the idea for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more, please let me know in the comments below. Remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch the new videos. It helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. I appreciate you watching guys. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.